Welcome back to another Film Geek video. Today I am talking about five obscure movies from the 90s. Now this isn't a ranking video. These are just five movies that I thought they don't get enough love. They don't get talked about enough today. They're all from different genres. I didn't just stick with one thing. So this isn't just five horror films. These are five different suggestions from all over the place. I have horror, well, horror comedy, comedy, action, and a little drama musical in there too. So sit back, pop a big bowl of popcorn, because we're going to talk about five obscure films from the 90s. The first movie I'm going to talk about on this list was a suggestion that came from me in the comments section from a previous video that was five obscure movies from the 80s. And the comment was something of the gist of, hey, I know this isn't from the 80s, but it's kind of an obscure film and it's a lot of fun. And you know what? I actually own that film. And that is Surviving the Game. Surviving the Game is directed by Ernest R. Dickerson. And it's starring Rucker Hauer, Charles S. Dutton, Gary Busey, F. Murray Abraham, John C. McGinley, and Ice freaking T. Surviving the Game is based off of the short story The Most Dangerous Game. The story where a bunch of rich guys get a dude, a poor dude, to go run around in the woods and the rich guys hunt him down with like, you know, rifles and stuff. This is pretty much the same thing. Ice-T plays a homeless guy, a bunch of rich dudes ask him to be their camping guide for some reason, and then they hunt down Ice-T. They're like, we're gonna give you a little bit of time here, go run, and we're gonna go hunt you down, dude. Dude, and that is exactly what doesn't happen. No, no, it would seem that uh, old Ice T's got some tricks up his sleeve and he fights back against these rich bastards trying to cunt him down. It's basically a really badass cat and mouse kind of action adventure film with a really fun cast not too much of a story but lots of amazing violent action this film has also some great cinematography it's shot purely on location and it uses the woods and the environment to its complete and absolute fullest. This movie is not the greatest film ever made, but it's far from the worst film, and it doesn't need to be forgotten. So in a world where all these really bad movies are being remembered, can we at least try to remember a nice, fun action film that's just a big old popcorn flick from the 1990s? Because that's exactly what this is, just a really fun popcorn action film. And if that's something you're in the mood for, you might enjoy Surviving the Game. And you can find it right now to rent on Prime, YouTube, and Google Movies. Or as I showed, you can also get a hold of the old uh, Snapcase DVD like a myself rahar. Now let's just hypothetically say you're not in the mood for an overly violent, gory action film. Well, don't worry, guys. I've got you covered. Even though this movie is still somewhat in the crime genre, it's a fun, lighthearted, goofy comedy from 1990, My Blue. Heaven. My Blue Heaven is directed by Herbert Ross, and it's starring Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, Joan Cusack, and Melanie Mayron. This movie tells the story of Vinny, a mobster who's decided to, uh rat out his boss in court and so he's put into protection by the fbi the fbi agent is played by rick moranis and the mobster is played by steve martin but that's not the way this movie was originally cast oh no the steve martin Vinny character was originally cast as arnold schwarzenegger and steve martin was cast as the fbi agent but as it would turn out Arnold Schwarzenegger was offered the role in Kindergarten Cop, so he dropped out of filming for My Blue Heaven, and Steve Martin rolled into the part of Vinny, and Rick Moranis was cast as the FBI agent. Now, this is a very goofy, of-its-time comedy. Not every joke has aged perfectly, but what is there is still fun and charming and has an amazing cast. The story is, you know, basically goofball Goodfellas, like everything that happens after Goodfellas when he's put in protective custody. That's kind of what this movie is. Vinny goes on to try to live the life of the straight and narrow. Things don't go his way. It is just a really fun, silly 90s comedy. And if you're in the mood for something like that, this is definitely the film 
for you. Now, if you don't own your own copy of My Blue Heaven, don't worry, you can find it out there easily to rent on YouTube, Google Movies, and Amazon Prime. Moving on to something not so family friendly, I have 1993's California. California is directed by Dominic Cena, and it's starring Brad Pitt, Juliette Lewis, David Duchovny, and Michelle Forbes. It tells the story of a couple who is going out to California working on a book together, and they decide to you know, take another couple with them to kind of help out with gas and all on the drive, and it just so turns out that one of those people is, uh, you know, a serial killer. Now, this movie is not a straight-up horror film. This movie is more of a suspense thriller. David Duchovny plays a journalist who's working on a book about serial killers. His wife, played by Michelle Forbes, is a professional photographer, or maybe it's her, his girlfriend, I forget. But anyways, the two of them are going to travel across the country to California and take it, go to different locations of serial killers, their houses where they grew up, and so on and so forth. She's going to take photos of these areas, and he is going to write about and do, you know, do his journalistic thing at these areas. I don't know exactly how this works, to be perfectly honest, because she goes around and takes photos, and all he really does is like walk around the houses and all with a tape recorder and talks about everything that went on there. I guess he'll sit down later and write it all down. While he, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe he's walking around doing inspiration for the book, but it's just kind of interesting, but it's really a cool idea that these two are working on a book about serial killers, and then lo and behold, they have these two with them that are played by Juliette Lewis and Brad Pitt, and one of them turn out to be a serial killer. Well, it's Brad Pitt, okay? The movie doesn't fool around with not letting you know or hiding the fact, anything like that. Brad Pitt plays the serial killer. And so this is a road trip movie, which I really like because it really builds the relationship between the characters where they start to like or dislike each other. Like Michelle Forbes starts to notice some problems with Brad Pitt's character before David Duchovny and Juliette Lewis is really great in this movie. Yes, she pretty much plays a character that we've seen Juliette Lewis play a lot of times, but she's very good at it, so why not? David the Duchovny, also very solid performance, but Brad Pitt, man, he is scary in this role. If you've only seen Brad Pitt in movies in, like, the last... 10 years or something, you're not really, you know, you don't know his 90s performances back in the day when he was trying to get into the scene and he was taking on a lot more what I consider, you know, different roles and pushing what he could do as an actor. I feel, not that I feel that he's gotten lazy or anything like that. I just feel like, you know, he's gotten to a groove as a mature actor. He knows what he's good at and he sticks to what he's good at. Well, this is back when he was experimenting and trying to find his way and he delivered some really crazy performances back in the day and California happens to be one of them. Now, this is the kind of movie that I would say deserves a good, solid remake by a director that knows what this genre is capable of. Maybe someone like Ty West, a really nice slow burn murder-a-thon. That's the kind of movie that I would like to see from this. So if this is something that sounds interesting from you and you would like to check out one of my personal favorite performances from Brad Pitt, you can find this streaming for free with commercials on on Tubi and Pluto TV. Next up, we have a little musical drama from 1998, Velvet Goldmine. Velvet Goldmine is written and directed by Todd Haynes, and it's starring Ewan McGregor, Jonathan Reese Myers, Tony Collette, and Christian Bale. It tells the story of the fictional glam rock star Brian Slade and his rise and an eventual fall of stardom. Now, each of the characters is influenced by different musicians from the glam rock period. Brian Slade does come off a bit like David Bowie and very, very similar to David Bowie, but he is also influenced by the likes of Mark Bolan and Brian Fury. Another character played by Ewan McGregor, he's influenced by Lou Reed and Iggy Pop. This film is an absolute love letter to the music genre of glam rock from the 1970s. It was mostly in the UK, it did hear, hit here in the United States a bit, mostly in New York. I want to say one of the bigger glam rock bands in the United States was the New York Dolls. I'm not 
100% on that. That's just opinion based. And this movie is an absolute love letter to all of those bands of the 70s. And I really, really enjoy the performances in this film. All of the actors do an outstanding job in their roles. And also, Ewan McGregor and Jonathan Rees Myers, they do the singing in all of their songs. Now, there are original songs that are written just for this movie, and those are sang by Ewan McGregor and Jonathan Rees Myers. And then there's other songs in this movie that are songs by glam rock musicians like T Rex and Slade. And those songs are actually performed by other bands from UK pop pop like uh, pulp and Teenage Fan Club, just to name a couple. Another thing about this film is it is based heavily on the works of Oscar Wilde. In fact, throughout the entire film, there's moments where they quote Oscar Wilde, his philosophies, and directly from plays that he wrote. This film is told in a very Citizen Kane style, where a journalist played by Christian Bale is going around and talking to people connected to Brian Slade and trying to find out about his past. You see, this movie takes place 10 years before the events of the movie. The year is 1984 and Christian Bale plays a journalist who's given the task to go back and find out the details of Brian Slade because back in the day at the top of his fame he fakes his own death and then just completely vanishes from the spotlight whatsoever. So it has that feel where he's going around talking to all these people but at the same time it also tells the story of Christian Bale's character the journalist because he was a big fan of the glam rock scene and it goes back to all the memories and things that he had as more of a fan watching these people up on stage. Now if you are a fan of glam rock or this just sounds like a movie that you're curious about you can find it right now for rent on prime youtube and google movies the last movie we're going to talk about today comes to us from 1993 my boyfriend's back my boyfriend's back is a horror comedy directed by bob Bolivin, and it's starring andrew lowry tracy lynn danny zorn matthew fox and philip seymour hoffman my boyfriend's back tells the story of a high school student who wants to ask his his lifelong crush out to the senior prom but he doesn't really have the guts so he decides hey I got a plan he gets his best friend to stage a robbery at a local convenience store but while he's in the local convenience store a real thief shows up and the kid gets shot he then gets buried and uh, for no good reason whatsoever I guess you could say the power of love he comes back to life as a zombie I do not know why this movie is not a beloved cult classic it has all of the fun stuff a very campy b-movie horror story attached to it really likable fun lead characters a relatable story that we can all understand well not necessarily the coming back to life as a zombie but the whole idea of not having enough nerve or having a lifelong crush that we all would like to talk to someday it's a fun relatable silly film that should have been a cult classic but for some reason is slowly but surely being forgotten the movie itself has such an amazing comic book vibe to it not only does it do really cool comic book art transitions there is the silly comic book goofy dialogue hi mom hi dad hi johnny ah! you know son your brother and i and the ambulance driver and the coroner and the embalmer we're all pretty much convinced that you were dead i got better well, welcome home. Son. Really amazing matte paintings that give that other world vibe that gives it yet again another comic book look this film is just got so much charisma and goofy silly camp that i just don't understand how it didn't latch on and i guess maybe this is another reason why i love this film but it was another one of the movies that showed at the movie theater i worked back in the day at the mall the amc i worked at when i was a teenager this was another one of those movies that was showing there and i thought it was going to be a huge hit because i just loved it i went around telling everybody how awesome it was i don't know maybe this is the movie that convinced me you know get out there and talk about these things so there we have it folks five obscure films from the 90s or at least 
five films that just don't get enough love here in 2024. Well guys, if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and give me the old thumbs up so I know you like what you're seeing. And if there's one more thing you can do, folks, that is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna.